Now we are out. Allah Akbar. Now, Naji so seyans. Alhamdulillah. We promised about uh, seven days ago that inshallah we are coming to number 45 Odo Street, Obalende, Ikoi, Lagos and that we are bringing an evangelist, a pastor, a friend of Muslims who has been on this type of public outing? How many years ago, sir? Can you remember? Eight years. Eight years ago. I think the first outing we experienced was in first act, isn't it? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Now the evangelist is around. And the business of the day starts, inshallah. The kind of debate you are going to witness is what is referred to as interlocution. Because we have a very lengthy time. Even if you are starting by 12 o'clock, we are stopping by 4.30 by the special grace of God. By Asara to Minanom, everybody departs. The type of interlocution, interlocution meaning that each speaker from the Muslim side and the Christian side will be taking the interval of 10, 10 minutes. And each topic that is derived from 10 minutes discussion will be taken by the other party. That's how it's going to be. Interlocutory debates. Not debate per se. We have somebody with three one hour, another one with no. That is when we are still you know, grouping ourselves, but we believe we are matured enough now to exchange words of discussion within an interval. Inshallah, without wasting time, I'll be welcoming my special guest of honor for tonight. The man that you have been waiting for since 9 o'clock. And we are calling, he continues to say, he's coming, he's coming. If he did not come, we can't arrest him. There's nothing we can do. But he fulfilled his promise. And he showed up. May God continue to be your guide. Till you see the best in this world and in the year. I would like to introduce him. For your uh, information. He has an organization called Love a Muslim movement. He wants the Muslims to know the truth. That's why he's so confident enough to come anytime we call him. Even sometimes we hear, like last week, nobody tell him. He was only informed that we are having a program there and he came into our midst. I've been introducing my able evangelist, a great scholar, a good researcher, and uh, a very good presenter of his logical uh, presentation of his speeches at all times in person of evangelist Isang Udo Akaga, the founder and the leader of Love a Muslim Movement. Can you show up for recognition, please? Atabirullah! Now, that is evangelist for you. Because time has far spent and we have been expecting them, if the time permits, I will introduce his co followers. Not to waste time, I will be introducing the Muslim counterpart, the person of the person you know, the radio, and they call him a plane of comparative. Analysis, a person of 
Ustaz Malam Al Hajj Hossein Yusuf Al Mabira. Stand up for the position. Tonight, you are going to witness or visit the two of them in the area of intellectual discussion. We are the two of them are going to express themselves concerning some of the differences that always come up between the Muslim and the Christian. First, I will want them to use the first 30 minutes for introduction. And I'll be giving them 15, 15 minutes or 10 minutes. You know what it means? You are using 10 minutes out of 15 minutes. 10 minutes out of 15 minutes. The first 30 minutes, introduction. But out of the 30 minutes, it's going to be 15 or 10, 10 minutes. I'll be calling on the guests, the special guests of today, to introduce themselves, introduce his movement. He can also introduce some of his followers that are here with him. And introduce the best or the way he want to go in to the interlocution. Then from there, the malam we pick up on his introduction too, and we go away like that. May Allah be our guide. We are starting by the special grace of Allah. By the time we end, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should guide us to see more truth about the religion that we are all interested in, as they are and as we are. Evangelist, over to you on the microphone. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, stars. Isaac, I already know. My name is Evangelist Isang Udo Akaga, the friend of Muslims. And I want to greet all of you. I want to let you know that I love you with the love of God. I say to you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. By the grace of God, I'm the leader of Love a Muslim Movement. Love a Muslim Movement is a Christian organization. We are not Muslims, but we love the Muslim people, and we love to sit down in the midst of the Muslim people. So when I see a Muslim gathering like this, I always feel very happy. Um, a few of us have been delegated to attend this program. We still have much more who are not present here with us. But I will introduce, uh, first of all, the man holding the camera on, on our behalf. Uh, he is uh, Brother Kayode Akinyele. Um, I will also introduce from here, this is, um, we have Brother Mike. We have Brother Hope. We have Elder Mma. And uh, we have Brother Kayode. And uh, we also have Brother uh, Amosu over here. So we all love you with the love of God. And uh, we believe that we're going to have a very interesting time here together. We're going to study, we're going to learn. And God will bless all of you. So on behalf of um, the entire Love of Muslim movement, I want to greet you once again. I want to say to you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today's program has, has been introduced by the very capable moderator. It's a dialogue program, an interlocutory dialogue. I have been hearing so much of uh, Ustaz uh, Mabera from Sokoto. In fact, I was looking for a way that I would go to Sokoto and go and look for him. Yes, I'm very serious. So when I heard that he's here in Lagos, I was so happy and um, I made sure I attended that program uh, a week ago, last Saturday, yes, at number 71 Odo Street, particularly because I heard that my brother is in town. 
They call him the radio. And the aeroplane of comparative analysis. Today's, and so at the end of the program, he later sent me a text message inviting me for this program to choose a topic. And uh, we chose a topic and we agreed on the topic. Who is the promised comforter? And so today we shall be discussing on the topic who is the promised comforter? Um, we have heard very much that very much that Muhammad is the comforter and so we have also heard some other group saying no Muhammad is not the comforter this one is the comforter but today we want to sit down and we study we want to sit down if you are telling me you let me know what my time is doing I'm telling you now how many minutes do I have and so it is time tell me ten ten how many minutes I said 15 or 10 minutes. Did you say 10 minutes? Important. I have 6 minutes more. Today's program is very, very important. Some people think that it is a matter of Christian versus Muslim. I know some people are here, you want to look at uh, Christian versus Muslim. But let me tell you something. As far as I am concerned, as far as I believe, I don't believe that this is a Christian versus Muslim affair. Let me tell you why. The Christians and the Muslims we are on the same side. Hello? We are on the same side. And we don't worry, when I explain to you, you will you will see your no will turn to yes. Then who is the enemy? Who are we fighting? The enemy is the devil. The enemy is Satan. The Quran mentioned him as Shaitan. Yes. That is why we say, I wish we lie in a Shaitan regime. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. That means you are casting away the Shaitan, and the Shaitan should get out. That means your enemy is the Shaitan. Hello? Hello? Ah. Shaitan ah. is the one that knows how to propagate falsehood, propagate lies, to deceive you and to deceive me. Shaitan is your enemy. Shaitan is my enemy. And so I will never see a Muslim as my enemy. That is why we, the name of our group is Love a Muslim. We are also preaching to all the Christians that we should not hate Muslims, that we should love the Muslim, because the Muslim is not our enemy. I am still on my introduction. How many minutes more? Four minutes more. I am still on my introduction. So when I have dialogue with, the, with a Muslim, what am I doing? We say, look, we are on the same side. The devil wants to deceive you and take you to hellfire. The devil wants to deceive me and take me to hellfire. The devil is the spirit that knows how to bring lies. Jesus talked about him in John chapter 8 verse 44. He says the devil is the father of lies. And so let us come together. Let us reason together. Let us search for the truth. Let us expose falsehood. Let us shame the devil. That is what we are doing. Why? Because the judgment day is coming. Every day somebody is taken away from our midst. Every day the ground is opening and is taken away is taking us away is taking our people away one by one we don't know who the next person is whether you are christian whether you are muslim one day the ground will open and swallow you and you go and face the judgment day it is a serious matter and so 
The devil wants you, the devil wants me to be destroyed. And so what do we have to do? We have to dialogue. Let us see the truth. Okay? My brother call my number. He said, Evangelist, come. Let us see the truth. Uh, Evangelist said, oh, my brother, let us see the truth. And so we choose a topic. Who is the promised comforter? How many minutes more? Three minutes more. Two minutes more. So, today's topic says, who is the promised comforter? That Jesus promised the coming of a comforter. Ustaz, my brother believe that that comforter is Mohammed. Evangelist Islam believe that that comforter is not Mohammed. Islam believe that the, Mohammed is not the comforter at all. My brother believe that Mohammed is a comforter. One person is in error. Hello? If my brother is, is holding the truth, that means Isang that believe that Muhammad is not a comforter is in error. If Isang is holding the truth that Muhammad is not the comforter, that means my brother is in error. It is a serious matter. So, there is no need for us to fight. I believe this program is a program that will establish peaceful coexistence between Christians and Muslims. We can discuss our differences, we can, we can analyze the Bible and the Quran, and at the end of the day, even if you don't believe me, even if I don't believe you, we can still live together in harmony. So, I want you to relax, fasten your seatbelts. We are going to have a very wonderful time this evening. It will be a fantastic time. As we go into the topic, who is the promised comforter? What to search? Is it true that Muhammad is a comforter or is it a lie? It is a serious matter. God bless you. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. We've had the introduction of Evangelist Esther Odo Akaga. The founder and the leader of love in Muslim movement. And they regard the organization as the Muslim lover. They love to be in the midst of the Muslims and they would like to declare or to iron a matter of the truth and nothing but the truth. He said the Muslims and the Christians are on the same side. But devil, being our enemy, is to be fought at all times. And that, in a very understandable manner, both speakers have agreed to discuss on the topic, who is the promise comforter. And he went to analyze, like he's concluding, but Yoruba will say, we are just bringing the birds from the pocket. And he said that as regards the topic, who is the promised comforter, Malam Osei Yusuf Mabera will speak on his own, but Esang tried to speak on his behalf that he will defend that Muhammad is the promised comforter, but to him, he disagreed. He has not come up with who is he from his own side. And that is the little briefing I can give upon his introduction. And he said, if we sit and we touch our beds, the aeroplane may enter cloud and do gri 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 gri, don't worry. It's still coming to balance. And inshallah, we are going to land in safety. Amen. 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 Somebody say Amen. Amen. Now, I'll be calling on Ustaz, Madam, Hussein Yusuf al Mabera to give us his own introduction for the next 10 minutes. Madam, you are welcome. A'udhu billahi shami al alim min al shaytan al rajeev bismillahi rahman rahim 
رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقرة من لساني يفقه قولي آه. on behalf of myself and the distinguished personalities around us and other listeners I extend my greetings to you with the greeting of Jesus in the book of John chapter 20 verse 19 and the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 36 and the greetings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also in the Holy Quran Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah, I thought that we should just go direct to the topic of discussion in order not to waste time. But according to the moderator of the program, he wants us to give some brief introductions. Well, my name is Hosseini Yusuf Mabira from Sokoto. I am the coordinator of the Center for Islamic Propagation and Comparative Religious Education in Sokoto State. And Alhamdulillah, I am very glad and happy to meet my friend and orator and also an analyst, a public orator, Evangelist Isang Udu. Akaga from Akwaibon State. You are highly welcome to this very important and monumental gathering. Uh, as we are all aware, the topic of presentation, who is the promised comforter, was chosen not by myself, but by the evangelist himself. We want to know who was that particular comforter who was that particular counselor? Who was that particular helper? Who was that particular spirit of truth mentioned and foretold by Jesus Christ, the Son of Mary? We are told as Muslims in the Holy Quran that the advent of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the universal prophet that came after the advent of Jesus, the son of Mary, one of the great descendants of Abraham, through the first son of Abraham, known as Ishmael, that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the fulfillment of the prophecy made by Jesus about the coming of the Comforter. That is in the Holy Quran, chapter 61, verse 6. The Almighty Allah said, Wa iskala isabna Maryama. Remember, O Muhammad, when Christ, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, Ya Bani Israela, O you, the children of Israel, Inni Rasulullah alaykum. I am indeed the messenger of Allah to you. Meaning, Jesus was sent to the Jews, according to the Quran. And that is also what the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 where Jesus said, I was sent only to the Lordship of the house of Israel. And the primary aim of my coming is to confirm the teachings of Moses and the law of the prophet that came before me and this is compatible with the statement of Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 to 18 where Jesus said that think not that I have come to destroy the law and the prophet I have not come in order to destroy them that I come in order to fulfill them for verily, verily, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle, 
shall in no wise pass away from the law till all be fulfilled. And he said, Wamubashuram be Rasuli ya at a member Adishmuhu Ahmad. And I am giving you the good news of a messenger that will come after me. And his name is Ahmad or Muhammad, meaning the comforter or the prisoner. That is the linguistical or etymological meaning of the word Ahmad or Muhammad. But when he came on to them with clear evidences, they said that this is nothing but a magic. Therefore, according to our own Quran, that is the Muslim holy book, Jesus foretold about the coming of Muhammad. And that is what we are going to discuss with Evangelist Isan Kudu, a saga of Aquaibon State. Secondly, according to the Holy Quran chapter 7, verse 157, we are told that the advent of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is mentioned in the law of Moses and the Gospel of Jesus. Meaning, the advent of Muhammad is mentioned in the Gospel of Jesus and the law of Moses. Then Allah says in the Holy Quran chapter 2 verse 146 Allah zina atayna humul kitaba ya arifu nahu kama ya arifu na abna ahum wa inna fariqa minhum la yaktumuna al haqqa wa hum ya alamu Allah said those Jews and the Christians that we have given the book before you O Muhammad ya arifu nahu they knew Muhammad they knew that the prophet who of Muhammad was true even as they knew their own children. That a section of the Jews and the Christians we are used to hiding the truth, distorting the truth with respect to the advent of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. You know, then secondary, according to the Holy Quran, chapter 3, verses 70 to 71. The Almighty Allah said, Ya Ahal al Kitab, O oh you the people of the scriptures, Limataksuruna bi ayatillah. Why do you disbelieve in the verses of Allah that spoke about the coming of Muhammad in your own scriptures? Wa antum tashhadun, when you are witnesses over these particular verses. Then Allah says, Ya Ahal al Kitab, O oh you the people of the scriptures, why do you conceal the truth with falsehood? And hide the truth. And you know the truth. Why then do you hide it? Now, inshallah, today we are going to see why Muhammad is believed by the Muslims to be the comforter. We are going to produce our evidences in the light of the Christian scriptures just as we have produced our evidences in the light of the Holy Quran. So inshallah, I will now wait for the next order before we continue. Thank you. Straight into the business of the day. While I'll be calling on evangelists, Isan, Udo Akaga to roll the business of the day ruling and let us hear who is the comforter, the promised comforter. Evangelist, you are welcome. How many minutes? Ten, ten minutes. Okay, ten minutes. Okay, the topic for today says who is the promised comforter who is the promised comforter the first thing you ask is what is the meaning of that topic where did the topic come from why is this question a very serious question who is the promised comforter if somebody was a promised comforter, who promised the comforter? And why is it a major discussion between the Christians and the Muslims? 
I will start by saying that Jesus made a statement. Of course, he made so many statements, but he made a statement that concerns the topic of today. Where this question came from. And let us hear what Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 16. Is it quite and I will pray the Father. Jesus said, I will pray the Father, I will talk to my Father, and he shall give you another comforter. And the Father will give you another comforter. Just stop there first. I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter. I want you to understand that Jesus was talking to his disciples. He was talking to his followers. He was talking to the people that believed in him. Jesus was presenting a lecture. He was presenting a lecture to them. He was delivering a speech. And that statement is a, just a little part of that speech. It's a little part of that speech. We shall look at that speech the more when, as we go along. But it is that statement that brings about this question. Jesus said, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter. And so the question comes, who is that comforter? Now, why is it an issue for Christian-Muslim dialogue? Why is it an issue for Christian-Muslim dialogue? If Jesus said in the Bible, I will pray the Father and He will give you another comforter, why are the Christians and the Muslims having the dialogue? I'm happy with uh, my co-speaker uh, tonight. My co-speaker tonight talked about this, this, the scripture of the Christians and then the Quran as the book, the only Quran as the, 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 the book the Muslims believe. So if the Muslims believe strongly in the Quran, why are we now asking the question, who is the promised comforter which we read in John chapter 14 verse 16? And my co-speaker answered the question during his um, introductory speech from the Quran chapter 61 verse 6. Quran chapter 61 verse 6, he read it out in the Arabic and in the English translation. Where the Quran says, And remember, now Allah in the Quran is talking to somebody, he said, Remember, when Jesus, son of Mary, when Jesus, son of Mary, said, All children of Israel, now the Quran is saying that Jesus, son of Mary, said, all children of Israel. I am the messenger of Allah unto you. I am the messenger of Allah unto you. Confirming the Torah which came before me. No problem. And giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me. And giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me. Whose name shall be Ahmad. Whose name shall be Ahmad. The Quran says so. That Jesus said. The Quran is saying no. That Jesus said. That all you children of Israel. I am a messenger confirming the Torah and I am giving you I am giving you a good news about it's all right it's all right I am giving you a good news about a messenger to come whose name will be Ahmed so why does this come as a, as a Christian Muslim dialogue because the Quran has made an allegation. The Quran is saying, Jesus said that I am that He's giving you a good news about a messenger. Jesus has promised a messenger 
that a messenger is coming and his name will be Ahamas. Now, whosoever believes that the Quran is the truth, for example, my co-speaker tonight, who believe the Quran is the truth, I now have to challenge him. I'll say, sir, I want to challenge you. Show me where Jesus promised the coming of a messenger whose name will be Ahmad. Where did Jesus make such statements? If you cannot show me such statements, then I will be continue to believe that the Quran is telling lies against Jesus. Okay? Yes. I know some you believe in the Quran so much. Inshallah. But I want you to understand that there are some people on this earth who do not believe that the Quran is the, is the word of God. There are some people who do not believe that the Quran is the truth. There are some people. And so, if you really want if you really want to be sincere, you signal me, okay? If you want to be sincere, don't consider yourself alone. You are not the only member of your political party. There are some people in that your political party who do not believe in your religion. That is why we talk about religious tolerance. You have to understand that there are some people who do not believe. If I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior, I have to understand that there are some people who do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior. Don't say that because you believe this thing, everybody must believe it. Everybody is not you. There are some people who do not believe that the Quran is the truth. So, those people will challenge you. Show me where Jesus said that a messenger is coming and his name will be Ahmed. Show me. If you don't show me, or if you don't show such a person, such a person will continue to believe that the Quran is not the truth. At least, maybe all the Quran is the truth, but Quran chapter 60, 61 verse 6. He will believe that Quran 61 verse 6 is not the truth. And so, I have discussed with so many Muslims, show me where Jesus mentioned Muhammad is coming, a messenger is coming, and his name is Muhammad. They open to John chapter 14 verse 16. Read John chapter 14 verse 16. And I will pray the Father. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. Whose name shall be Ahmad. Is it what he wrote there? No. What do you read right there? That another comforter. Mm -hmm. That he may abide with you forever. That he may abide with you forever. So the first, my first uh, uh, challenge now is I want Ustaz Mabera to show me the f where Jesus promised the coming of a messenger whose name shall be Ahmed. Because John chapter 14 verse 16, Jesus promised the coming of a comforter, but Jesus did not say his name shall be Ahmad. But the Quran says that Jesus said his name shall be Ahmad. So show me where Jesus said a messenger is coming and his name shall be Ahmad. Thank you very much. My time is up. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Evangelist has spoken and has thrown his challenge. He said if we want to start to show categorically to him where Bible have stated concerning the statement of our Quran, chapter 61, verse 6, where Jesus said the uh, messenger or the the what? Huh? Messenger is the messenger is coming, whose name is Ahmad, according to Quran chapter 61, verse 6. I will not waste time. I will give the microphone to Malam to respond to his questions. Alhamdulillah. Uh, the question he threw to me 
is as simple as the answer. Ah, uh, listen, please, 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 please. He asked me a question that he wanted me to show him in his English versions of the Bible, translated Bible, where the word Ahmad is written. And when asking this question, he forgot that Jesus did not speak English. Jesus Christ preached in his own language, known as Aramaic. And the Bible, you know, the Bible was translated from Hebrew to Greek. And in the course of the translation, according to the 32 Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed up by 50 different cooperating denominations, within the preface of the Revised Standard Version of 1952 and the Revised Standard Version of 1971. Listen, listen, they said that, they said that the King James Version of the New Testament was based upon a Greek text that was marked by mystics containing the accumulated errors of 14 centuries of manuscript copying. A lot of errors. So, the word Ahmad in English means the comforter. It means the counselor. It means the helper. It means the spirit of truth. And according to the book of John, According to the book of John, uh, please, 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 please listen. According to the book of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, this is what Jesus said. In the book of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, Jesus told his people, and I quote, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, come, in some versions of the Bible they use comforter, others use helper, others use counselor, others use in the original Hebrew Bible, uh, original Aramaic Bible, the word pericletos is used. In the Arabic Bible, the original Arabic is what? Ahmad, that is Muhammad or the praised one. Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, come, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatsoever he shall hear, that is what he will speak. For he will receive some information about me, and he will pass this information to you, and he will glorify me, and he will show you the judgment to come. Listen, please, listen. Listen, please. I just want you to listen. Now, Jesus used about eight masculine genders. He, pronoun, to describe that particular comforter. Jesus used about eight masculine genders to describe that particular comforter. And Jesus said, when he come, he will tell you many things about me. He will not speak on his own authority. But whatsoever he shall hear from God, that is what he will speak. And according to the Holy Quran, we are told, Wama yantiku anil hawa, Muhammad was not speaking on his own authority. In huwa illa wahayu yuha, it is an inspiration that was revealed to him from the Almighty God. And lama hul shadidul kuwa, and he was taught by one mighty in power, that is the Almighty God. Now, if evangelist Isang, Udo Akaga, is ready to produce the original Bible in the language of Jesus, used by Jesus in his lifetime, I am ready to indicate to him where Ahmad is written, alphabetically. Notwithstanding, this is one of the Gospels of Jesus Christ, alayhi salam. In chapter 97 of this particular Gospel, the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is pronounced by Jesus. Listen, then the disciples, the priests said, how shall the Messiah, meaning the anointed, the word Messiah means anointed, how shall the Messiah be called, and what sign shall reveal his coming? Jesus answered, the name of the Messiah is admirable, meaning the name of the anointed one of God is admirable, for God himself gave him the name 
when he had created his soul and placed it in a celestial splendor. God said, Wait, Muhammad, for thy sake I will to create paradise, the world, and a great multitude of create, create, creatures, whereof I make you a present, in so much that whoso shall bless you shall be blessed, and whoso shall curse you shall be cursed. When I shall send you into the world, I shall send you as my messenger of salvation, and thy word shall be true, in so much that heaven and earth shall fall, but thy word shall never fail. Muhammad is his blessed name. Wow. That is in the Gospel of Barnabas. Therefore, according to the statement of Jesus, he prophesied about the coming of somebody after him, and he used the masculine gender, he, 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 about eight times, and the word he, grammatically, in the language, in English language, it means a human being, referring to a human being. A man, it, it refers to a ghost, or to an animal, or to a non-living object, but the word he, refers to what a man and if you don't believe that look at that look at your own dictionary so the only universal prophet that came after muhammad was uh, after jesus was none other than the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then he quoted the book of john chapter 14 verse 16 where jesus said that i will pray the father that he shall send you another comforter and he will abide with you forever Another comforter. Who was the first comforter? Because Jesus says another comforter. According to First John chapter two verse one, Jesus was the first comforter. Then who would be the other comforter after Jesus? The Holy Spirit. If you say the Holy Spirit, then how many spirit? How many Holy Spirit do we have? He said another comforter. Does another comforter means another Holy Spirit? No, another comforter means another prophet like Jesus. Because according to the book of Matthew chapter 21, verses 10 to 11, Jesus was a prophet of God. Therefore, another comforter means another prophet like Jesus. And the only universal prophet that appeared after Jesus is none other than the holy prophet Muhammad. Secondly, Jesus said, when he come, he will abide with you forever. What is the meaning of this statement? It means that the teachings of that particular comforter the teachings of that particular spirit of truth will continue to live with you forever and ever and ever and ever till the end of the world. That is why the Holy Quran describes the revelation given to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the perfect revelation. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا. Today I have perfected your religion for you and have completed my favor upon you and I have chosen Islam to be your religion and your way of life. So Islam had been perfected. That is why in the book of John chapter 16 verses 12 to 14 Jesus said, When he come, he will guide you into all the truth. He will tell you many things about me. Yes, the Muslims to believe, not believe in Jesus. The Muslims believe that Jesus was sent by God. The Muslims believe in the original gospel of Jesus Christ. The Muslims believe in the holiness of Mary, the mother of Jesus. The Muslims believe in the various miracles, signs and wonders performed by Jesus Christ. All on the authority of what the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought from the almighty God. So just as Jesus said, when he come, he will testify of me. Muhammad testified of Jesus. Because in the religion brought by the Holy Prophet Muhammad or ordained by the Almighty God through the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Jesus is respected in the house of Islam. Therefore, Muhammad is the fulfillment of the biblical prophecy mentioned by Jesus in the book of John chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, and the book of John chapter 14, verse 16. Thank you. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We have listened to Ustaz and he has thrown the answer back to the challenges thrown by Evangelist Isan Udo Akaga. Alongside the statement, he said if he wants Evangelist to show him if there is any other comforter in his Bible apart from Prophet Muhammad, may the peace of Allah be with him, 
mentioned by Jesus Christ, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam in the Bible. Now to evangelists to give us as well as the original Bible. He quoted the book and he was quoting, he quoted from the Gospel of Barnabas to support the statement that Muhammad is the blessed, made mention in in the Bible. Evangelist, over to you. Thank you very much. I want us to be very attentive to this program because what is going on here is a very, very serious thing. Remember what I said in my introduction? It is not Isang versus Mabera. No. It is Isang and Mabera versus the devil. We are doing this thing to seek the truth and to expose lies. Because if one person is saying this thing, and another person is saying this thing, somebody is telling lies. Somebody is believing lies. And the person that is speaking lies is not telling lies because he wants to tell lies. Because he's telling lies because that is what he believes. He thinks is the truth. So, listen very well. Um, I try to challenge that you should show me where Jesus said that the comforter's name, the, 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 the messenger that is to come, his name will be Ahmad. He said, Ahmad, that means comforter. If you talk about translation, when they are translating the Bible, did they translate the names of the people? If they, if they translated the name of Ahmad, why did they not translate the name of Abraham? Or translate the name of Moses? Or translate the name of Isaiah to be anything? Why is it only Ahmad that they are translating the name to be comforter? Okay, if Ahmad is the same thing as comforter, remember, Quran 61 verse 6 says, Jesus promised the coming of a messenger. That is what the Quran says. That Jesus promised the coming of a messenger whose name will be Ahmad. Now, if they translate it, then if Ahmad means comforter, Jesus was supposed to say whose name will be comforter. Jesus did not say his, his, his name will be comforter. Jesus said, I will, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. My brother says the first comforter is Jesus, the second comforter is Muhammad. Yet he said that the, the meaning of Ahmed is comforter. That means the first Ahmed is Jesus, and the second Ahmed is Muhammad. If we want to follow his teaching, that Ahmed means comforter, that means the first Ahmed is Jesus, and the second Ahmed is Mohammed to show you that his interpretation and translation does not tally at all it's not correct <laughs> Jesus did not say his name will be comforter if you want to, to translate Ahmed to mean comforter the Quran says Jesus said his name will be Ahmed why does not show me where Jesus said his name will be comforter he didn't say his name will be comforter. He said he will give you another comforter. No. Uh, my brother now went and brought a book. He said it is one of the gospel of Jesus. This is not gospel of Jesus. The gospel of Barnabas is a concocted book written by unknown Muslim people, faceless Muslims. And it's propagated by Muslims to, to, to say things that Jesus did not say. It is a Muslim book. This one is, is uh, propagated by Muslim Education Trust, MET, Book Market, Main Bazaar. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I don't know that place. Look at it. Muslim Education Trust. And he's now taking it to be one of the Gospels of Jesus. The Gospel of Barnabas is a concocted book written by faceless, a faceless Muslim group. It is not re recognized as scripture. That is why they are putting Muhammad there. Yeah, if we study the Gospel of Barnabas, all the Muslim scholars, they are, the way they preach and they teach against the Bible is from the Gospel of Barnabas. 
No. The question still remains, who is the promised comforter? Let us go into the promise of Jesus. How many minutes more? If I ask you how many minutes, you ask me immediately. When we now go into this promise, Jesus gave a promise. Hello? Are we together? Yes. Please. This is the Christians and the Muslims. We are coming together. We want to seek the truth and we want to expose falsehood. When you see something that is falsehood and in your heart you know it is falsehood, say it is falsehood because on the judgment day God will ask you a question. Jesus was giving a lecture. Jesus was presenting a seminar. Jesus was was giving out a speech. And Jesus said, in that speech, please listen to me, please, especially you at the front. I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter. Now, that is John chapter 14, verse 16. Ustaz Barbera now jump to John chapter 16, verse 12 to 14, to begin to uh, talk about the act of the comforter. Verse 14, John chapter 16, verse 12 to 14. Can you read? I have many, I have yet many things to say unto you. I still, I still. Yes. But ye cannot bear them now. Verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come? When the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. He will not speak of himself. But whatsoever, but whatsoever he shall hear. Whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak. That he shall speak. Stop there. Those things are the acts of the comforter. Those things are the things the comforter will do. Those things are the, the things the comforter will perform. The act of the comforter. You cannot start from the acts of the comforter. The first thing you must look at is the credentials of the comforter. First thing. Before you look at the acts. If you check the credentials and you see that he has failed, you see that he does not satisfy the credentials, then you don't need to listen to him at all. You don't need to listen to his acts. You, you cannot, Jesus cannot be giving you a lecture in John chapter 14 verse 16. You now jump. For example, I tell you that I will send somebody to you. The man is a banker. When he comes to your office, give him all your money. Okay? Give him all your money. This man will take care of your money for you. This man will invest your money. This man, that is the act. What he will do. But before you give him the, the money, make sure he fulfill these credentials. The man will come to you with his identity card. Okay? The man will come to you with a letter of authority. Okay? The man will come to you with a certificate of professional experience. Those are the credentials. Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. He will take care of your money at the act. He will invest your money properly for you at the act. He will give you profit on your money. Those are the acts. You cannot go into the act until you first of all cross check the credentials hello Hi. jesus gave us the credentials how many minutes are you there thank you jesus gave us the credentials he said when the comforter come he will have this credential when he come he will have this one when we come you have that one you check the credentials first if he does not have the ID card, he does not have the certificate, he does not have the letter of authority, don't, don't believe in him. Send him away. Okay? Because a 419 will also do as if he will keep your money for you. He will invest it. He will chop your money and you will waste your life. So, in my next submission, I will give you the credentials that Jesus gave. Then, if Muhammad claimed to be the comforter, 
We will check the credentials. Whether Muhammad, Muhammad has the, 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 the credentials. Lord. Then, if the Holy Spirit claims that he is the comforter, we will check him also. We will check the credentials. That is what I'm going to do when I come next. My time is up for now. God bless you. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Are we enjoying the program at all? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Evangelist and Udo Akaga has spoken. And he has defended all what uh, Jose Yusuf Mabera has presented. He goes to the ascent of uh, calling the Gospel of Barnabas a concocted book written by a member of a Muslim, according to him. And he said, if we want us to look at the credentials of the promised comforter, as mentioned by Jesus Christ in the Bible, don't let me waste time. Malam Osei Yusuf Mabera, up to the microphone. Uh, first and foremost, the Christians rejected the Gospel of Barnabas simply because it mentions the name of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam without any distinction and it denies the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and there Jesus said cause be everyone that believe that I am the son of God or God in this particular gospel therefore the Christians decided to reject the gospel of Barnabas just as they rejected the Holy Quran just as they rejected other portions in their own versions of the Bible that spoke about the true position and nature of Jesus Christ alayhi salam. And he said that this gospel, you know, was all taught by the Islamic Educational Trust. They are only say, selling it. They are not the author of this particular gospel. Just for example, this Bible, it has the company that published it, that, 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 that used to, you know, uh, that, 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 publish it and sell it out. But they are not the auto. The same thing with the yeah, yeah, that educational trust. Therefore, Barnabas, according to Colossians chapter 4 verse 10, was among the 70 apostles of Jesus. And Barnabas was a good man and full, filled up with the Holy Spirit and consolation. He was one of the 70 apostles of Jesus. And he wrote what he had directly from the lip of Jesus Christ alayhi salam. Notwithstanding, if you don't believe in this particular gospel, we still have more than 1,000 evidences to prove to you about the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in your Bible. The first question he asked, he said that he wants to see the name of Muhammad in his own Bible. A-H-M-A-D. -A 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 Ahmad or Muhammad. That is what he told me. Now please, I would like to ask him directly. The Old Testament and the New Testament, which one confessed? Answer your question. Okay, you answer me later. We all know that the Old Testament came before the New Testament. And according to the New Testament, the name that was given to Jesus before his conception, before he was born, was Jesus. According to what the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 21. Meaning, when eight days was accomplished for the circumcision of the child, he was given the name Jesus, the name that was given to, by, by the angel to him before he was born. Now, I challenge evangelist uh, Isan to indicate where in the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi the name Jesus is written before his coming. The name G Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. Where is it written? If you say that you will not believe in Muhammad simply because you have not seen the name Ahmad in your own Bible, then where have you seen the name Jesus in the Old Testament before the coming of Jesus? That is the first challenge. Then, the second question. He said that, I said that Jesus is also comforter. Meaning, Jesus is Ahmad. This is simple English. What is the meaning of the word comforter? It means counselor. It means helper. All the prophets that came from the Almighty God are comforters. They are helpers. They are messengers of the Almighty God. 
but at the same time they have their own various distinctive names you know then the word comforter was a translation of the word Ahmad the word comforter or counselor was a translation of the word Ahmad the something helper why do we have these various interpretations because of the distortions of the bible the bible has been tempered with the bible has been edited some you know names in the bible have been distorted that is why the almighty god mentioned in the holy quran chapter 3 verse 71 ya ahad al kitab all you the people of the scriptures why do you cover the truth with falsehood instead of them to leave the name Ahmad or Muhammad as it is mentioned you know they decided to translate it so that people will not be able to recognize it they translated it into English please when Jesus was prophesying about the coming of the comforter or the helper or the counselor did Jesus use the word comforter in his own language answer that question did he use the word comforter is comforter the language of Jesus or is it an English language did Jesus speak in English in his own lifetime? What did Jesus say? What did Jesus actually say when he pronounced about the coming of the Comforter? What did he use in his own language? I want you to mention that. In the language of Jesus, what did he say? Secondly, in the book of John chapter 16, verse 12 to 14, he said that, you know, you can be able to identify the promised Comforter through the description of John chapter 16 verses 12 to 14 yes first Jesus said I have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now however when he a human being the spirit of truth meaning a spiritual somebody when he comes he the human being will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own authority I am asking you the Muslims was Muhammad the author of the Quran no. Muhammad was not the author of the Quran and Muhammad never claimed to be the author of the Quran Muhammad was received the Holy Quran through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit it was the Holy Spirit that brought the revelation of the Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and even your Bible says in 2nd Peter chapter 1 verse 21 that no prophecy ever come by the impulse of man but men, holy men of God spoke when they are moved or inspired by the Holy Spirit as they had the message from the Almighty God therefore Muhammad was speaking under inspiration the Quran confirmed that Quran chapter 16 verse 102 Allah said say the Holy Spirit descended with this Quran in truth to you O Muhammad so that you know he will threaten the faith of those who believe and as a guidance and also as a good news you know to the Muslims therefore it was the Holy Spirit that brought the Quran to Muhammad so just as the Bible says Jesus said he will not speak on his own authority Muhammad was not speaking on his own authority but it was the Holy Spirit that brought the Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam secondly Jesus said you know whatsoever he shall hear from God that is what he will speak he will receive of mine meaning he will receive some information about me we the Muslims we don't have to read the Bible before we believe in, 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 in Jesus we read the Quran we know about Jesus Christ in the Quran we respect Jesus just as the Holy Quran presented him in the Holy Quran Jesus is mentioned Jesus said when he come he will tell you many things about me there are so many things performed by Jesus as mentioned in the Holy Quran which are not recorded in the Bible for example the first miracle performed by Jesus speaking the day he was born is mentioned in the Quran it's not mentioned in the Bible the miracle of bed using 
a clay molding the figure of a bed breathing into it and it becomes a bad by the permission of God it's mentioned in the Quran and it's not mentioned in the Bible you know announcing to people what they ate in their houses and what they stole it's mentioned in the Quran and it's not mentioned in the Bible praying for a table of food to be sent down from heaven it's mentioned in the Quran and it's not mentioned in the Bible Jesus said when he comes he will tell you many things about me then Jesus said he will glorify me he will make me to be respected for he will show you the judgment to come therefore Muhammad fulfilled all this criteria and presently Muhammad is abiding with us forever in his teachings as mentioned by Jesus in the book of John chapter 14 verse 16 that when the comforter comes he will abide with you forever and ever Muhammad is now abiding with us in his teaching therefore Muhammad is the promised comforter the universal prophet sent by the Almighty Allah as mentioned by Jesus the son of Mary Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Ustaz Hussein Yusuf has spoken and has rendered his uh, words to prove his time and is throwing the challenge onto Evangelist Udo Akaga, the Old and the New Testament, which one comes first. And he goes further to look into John chapter 16, verse 12 to 4, according to him, proving that nobody, nobody satisfied and made the prophecy of that verse fulfilled except prophet muhammad maybe evangelist and udu akaga as and he must produce who satisfy the prophecy of john chapter 16 verse 12 to 40 evangelist over to you thank you very, thank you very much he made the first challenge because i did mention that the quran said the Quran said that Jesus said a messenger is coming whose name shall be Ahmed. He now says, okay, the Old Testament and New Testament, which one came first? That if Jesus was prophesying in Old Testament, was his name mentioned there as Jesus? Okay? That if we go find his name mentioned as Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, boy, and then we, we still believe that Jesus was prophesied about in the Old Testament. Why don't we believe that Jesus prophesied Muhammad? Um, let me answer a question like this, sir. I have not heard anybody that said that the name Jesus is mentioned and written in the Old Testament, Jesus. Okay? Maybe Moses prophesied the coming of a messenger and his name and Moses said his name will be Jesus if you tell me that one that that's what Moses said then I will tell you show me where Moses mentioned that name Jesus are you with me but in this case in the Quran the Quran says it clearly that Jesus promised the coming of a messenger and his name shall be Ahmad then I have to call you and ask you, show me where Jesus said that. We're not talking about a prophecy that you want to come and show that the prophecy relates to Muhammad. I will go into that and show you that it does not relate to him. You now come back to say that where Jesus mentioned Muhammad, they have turned into comforter. He said that they have spoiled it. They spoil it to become comforter. He now went ahead to say that that comforter is the same thing with Ahmed. Then, the same Mabera also said that all prophets of God are comforters. He said before that the first comforter is, 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 is Jesus and the second comforter is Muhammad. And that the meaning of Ahmed is the same thing as comforter. He now went for to say all prophets of God are comforters. If all prophets of God are comforters, why do you not tell us that the first comforter is Jesus, the second comforter is Mormon? And upon what I told you about John chapter 16 verse, verse 13, the act of the comforter, you don't look at the act. You first of all look at the credentials. Hello? But I can see my honorable co-speaker does not know the credentials of the comforter, so I want to show you. 
Because before you listen to him, his, he, the word shall, he shall speak, it shall not be his own word, it shall be the word of the, of, 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 of the Spirit that is telling him, cool. Anybody can come and say, cool. Anybody can come to you and claim that he is receiving inspiration from God. Because the followers of Muhammad, they did not hear Allah talking. They heard it from Muhammad's mouth. What you see in the Quran, they say it is, it is the word of God, but it all came out from Muhammad's mouth. They did not hear God talking in the sky. Guru, guru, guru. Kul, kul. Kuli, are you Ali Agafiru? No. Yeah, you Ali. You know? It all came from his mouth. So, without wasting much time, ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you the credentials. Before you listen to him, you check the credentials. Remember the first example I told you. When that man comes, you check his ID card, you check his certificate, you check his letter of authority before you listen to him. Now, Jesus gave this promise during a lecture. John chapter 14 verse 16. Why do... I will pray the Father. Yes. And he shall give you another comforter. Mm-hmm. That he may abide with you forever. Stop there. Why don't we look at the lecture that Jesus was presenting when he gave this promise? The lecture, Jesus was presenting the lecture in John chapter 14 from verse 16. Why do we now jump to John chapter 16? We jump two chapters and we run away from the lecture of Jesus. Jesus gave a lecture and the title of that lecture was the promise comforter why don't we listen to lecture because I want to show you five credentials that Jesus gave if you believe that Jesus promised a comforter then you must look at these five credentials and you cross check it are we ready to go five minutes more. I have five minutes more I'll see if I can use one minute for each Credential number one, John chapter 14, the last part of verse 16. That he may abide with you forever. The comforter will abide with you forever. Whether it's a man or, or a woman or, or a whatever it is, or whatever he is, the comforter will not die like Abacha. The comforter will not die like Obafemi or the comforter will not die like Michael Jackson. The comforter will not die like Abraham. He will not die like John the Baptist. He will not die like my grandfather. The comforter will abide with you forever. He will not die like Muhammad. He will not. The important thing is that he will, the comforter will not die. This is not the time for Salalah. Listen to this this message. Jesus gave number one credential. The comforter will not die. He did not say the message of the comforter will not die. No. He did not say the message of the comforter will not die. Because people will die and their, their, their legacy will stay. Their message will stay. The songs they sang will stay. The comforter himself. Don't tell me that the Quran uh, is with you forever. If the Quran is with you forever, that means the Quran is the comforter. It's not Muhammad. It's better for you to tell me that the Quran is the comforter. I will, I will, I will, I will, maybe I will try and believe you small. Yes. But you are not telling me that Muhammad is the comforter. Jesus said, creation number one, the comforter will not die. If he dies, then he has failed to be the comforter. Number two. Even the spirit of truth, he says, God cannot receive. The spirit of truth. Credential number two. I may not have the time now to give you all the five credentials. Maybe when I come in, I will give you the remaining. But please remember, credential number one is that he must give you a certificate to show that he will never die. Credential number two, the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. Uh, uh, 
my brother say is a man of truth. It's not a man of truth. Even if you hear Jesus talk about he, 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 the spirit of truth is also referred to as he. You don't refer him as it. Because it means a non-living thing. The spirit of truth is living. It's alive. The spirit of truth is alive. And Muhammad was never called spirit of truth. Show me where did the Quran talking calling spirit of truth? Even the Quran is telling us, they tell us that Muhammad was receiving message from, from, from the spirit of truth. They did not say that Muhammad himself is the spirit of truth. Because Muhammad himself was used to pray after the good life, after the good life, after the good guy, after the good life, forgive me my sins, forgive me my sins. He was a sinner. Yes. He was a sinner. He used to pray after a good life, after a good life, after a good life, after a good life, after a good life. Forgive me my sin. Says what? Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Muhammad used to pray like that. Me forgive me my sins. It's not the spirit of truth. That is credential number two. Credential number three. Whom the world cannot receive. Credential number three. Whom the world cannot receive. I will give you the remaining two credentials when I come back. But for now, I want to stay on these three. Number one, he will not die like Muhammad. Number two, is the spirit of truth. He's not a sinner. He will not pray after a good life. <laughs> Number three, the world cannot receive him. The world cannot know him. The world will say, what is this? Who is he? But Muhammad will know him. We know the name of his father, Abdullah. We know the mother, uh, Amina. We know his, some of the wife, uh, uh, Khadija, and all that. We know where he, he died and he was buried. Please allow my timekeeper to time me now. You know, so we know him. So when, when I come back... Allah Akbar. Our uh, evangelist said he wants to give us the credentials of the promised comforter. And he was able to give three. One, he will abide with you forever. He will not be a sinner. Uh, the third one, the world does not know him. And the world does not know him. That's the credential that is given according to the book of John chapter 16 verse 14 the last verse chapter 14 verse 16 and 17 aha uh -huh. chapter 14 verse 16 and 17 now we hand over microphone to malam Osei yusuf mabera to give his own credentials uh, alhamdulillah john chapter 14 verse 16 the statement of jesus is very clear jesus said i will pray the father meaning i will pray to the almighty god that he shall send unto you another comforter who was the first comforter I don't you ought to answer my question you have not answered my question before who was the first comforter i threw this question almost three times jesus said another if i said another viral it means that i already have one with me so jesus said i will pray the father that he shall send unto you another comforter i ask evangelist Isan that does another comforter means another holy spirit he refused to answer the question up till now does another comforter means another holy spirit if yes how many holy spirit do we have that word comforter is not referring to the holy spirit that is referring to a physical human being a prophet of god a messenger of god like jesus the son of mary jesus was the first comforter you know muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the last comforter that came after jesus then jesus said he shall abide with you forever abiding with you forever does not mean that he will live in flesh and bones with you forever and ever that is not the statement of jesus because jesus used to speak in parable he will abide with you it means the teachings of that particular comforter will continue to be with you forever and ever and ever the teachings of that particular comforter and you read the book of john chapter 14 verses 6 to 7 if you want to understand that john chapter i'm uh, sorry revelation chapter 14 verses 6 to 7 division of john 
He said that, and I saw another angel flying in the air with an eternal scripture, an everlasting scripture, meaning the scripture that will remain with you forever and ever, saying, fear God and worship him that created the heavens, the sea, worship him that created all nations, worship him that created, you know, everything. You know, what is that particular everlasting scripture that will remain forever and ever? It cannot be the Bible brought by Jesus. That is why Jesus said, somebody will come after me. And when he come, he will abide with you forever and ever. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 9 to 10, it is written that for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is complete come, when that which is perfect come, the incomplete one will be kept aside. Therefore, if the complete revelation comes from the Almighty God through the mouth of a prophet of God, that revelation will remain forever and ever and ever. And that messenger that came with that universal message from the Almighty Allah is none other than the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when Jesus said that he will abide with you forever, he does not mean that that prophet will live forever. Because no prophet ever lived in this world forever and ever. No! Allah said, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا لِبَشَرٍ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ الْخُلْدِ You know, أَفَا إِمِّتَا فَهُمُ الْكَالِدُونَ we have not, you know, assigned immortality to any human being before you. Therefore, you, Muhammad, if you die, are they going to live forever? No human being will live forever in this world. But the teachings of that prophet, according to Jesus, the word of that prophet, according to Jesus, will continue to live with us forever and ever and ever. Then, he used the word sinner to describe Muhammad. I don't know in which verse of the Holy Quran he read that particular verse. Maybe during his own discussion he has to quote the verse where it is written that Muhammad was a sinner. All what we know, according to the statement of Jesus, when the comforter comes, he will teach you, you know, all things. Muhammad was teaching us how to ask for forgiveness. Just as Jesus taught his disciples, according to the book of Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 14, he taught his disciples how to ask for forgiveness. Forgive us our sins as we forgive our debtors. Was Jesus a sinner when he said, forgive us our sins? In your Bible, forgive us our sins. Jesus was teaching his disciples how to ask for forgiveness from the Almighty God. The same thing Muhammad was teaching us how to ask for forgiveness from the Almighty God. All the prophets of God are impeccable. They are all infallible. Five minutes, thank you. Then, he threw a question. He said the Quran used the word kul. Kul. Therefore, Muhammad was the one that was saying kul. It means that you misunderstood. You misunderstood the wisdom of the revelation of the Holy Quran. All say, who was saying say, that is the Almighty God to who? To Muhammad, through who? Through the Holy Spirit. And it's mentioned where? In the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12. And I quote, and the book is revealed unto him who is an illiterate, meaning who can neither read nor write, saying, read. And he said, I am not learned. Who was that particular person? And who commanded him to read? And what is the name of that particular book? Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12. And the book is revealed unto him who cannot read an illiterate somebody saying, read, ikra'a. And he said that I am not learned. Who was that particular person? I am challenging evangelist uh, Isang Udo Akaga. Now I want him. Hence he rejected Muhammad to be the comforter. I want him to mention the name of the comforter. Let us hear. Who was that particular comforter? Secondly, he quoted the statement that Muhammad was not known. Look, the Holy Quran mentioned already. Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ We send you not, O Muhammad, but to the whole of mankind. Bashir and Wanazira as a bringer of good news and a clear cut winner. But most of the people do not know, including him. That is why Jesus said, the comforter, whom the people do not know, they do not recognize him, they do not know him. That is why Allah says in the Holy Quran, challenging the Jews. 
whole world about Muhammad and their own scriptures and they distorted the name of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam limatal bisiwun al-haq abil batili wa taktumun al-haq wa atum ta'alamun Why do you cover the truth about the coming of Muhammad in your own scriptures? You know with falsehood wa taktumun al-haq and you hide the truth wa antum ta'alamun Why you know the truth? I am challenging Evangelist Ethan to tell me which of the versions of the Bible did Jesus use in his own lifetime? Which of the Bible? Because he is saying that Jesus never used the name Ahmad. These present versions of the Bible, which of them did Jesus use in his own lifetime? We quite agree, Jesus used the Gospel. He preached the Gospel. But what did Jesus said in his own mother's tongue? What did he say? about that comforter what word did he use to qualify the word comforter the word comforter is it an aramaic language or an english language in, then what did jesus say in his own language what did he say allah tell us in the holy quran you know when we were sure and the ya at a member of this muhu ahmad jesus used the word ahmad in the original language in his own language he used the word ahmad if you deny that, what did Jesus use? Because the word comforter is not an, is, is not an Aramaic word. It's only a translation of what Jesus said. Now I want him to tell me the original language spoken by Jesus about the coming of that particular person. He quite agreed that somebody was to come after Jesus. And he came. Who was that particular person? How did Jesus pronounce him? That is the question. Secondly, he talks about the criteria. All the criteria he enumerated, you know, are fulfilled with the coming of who? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First, Jesus said, he used the word he to indicate that he was a human being. Meaning, it was a human being that was to come. Not a spirit, not a ghost, not an animal. Then he said that he will not speak on his own authority. That comforter will not speak on his own authority. But whatsoever he shall hear from God, that is what he will speak. Then Jesus said, he will receive some information about me and he will pass this information to you. Now I challenge him to tell us what did the Holy Spirit said about Jesus after Jesus. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Well, by the time you look at the time, both of them have spoken for nothing less than one and a half hours now. That means they have been speaking for the past one and a half hours. According to the elders from inside there, they said we should give them recess of 10 minutes. Do you like to drink water? Uh -huh. You are drinking. Recess of 10 minutes. Think about it. And Malam has spoken when he said he wants evangelists to show him who is that comforter, if not Muhammad. And that he should show him categorically where the Quran says Muhammad is a sinner. And as well, that it should prove to him. Now, I come back. I believe the spirit of what you want. A time is coming when all of us will ask different questions. And I will want to throw at least three questions to the public upon what they are saying here. If you are unable to answer, that means you are not listening to anything. And I will welcome questions from the audience, at least four. Two from the Christian side, two from the Muslim side. Prepare for your question ready. When I call you, don't make any comment. Don't thank anybody. Don't ask anybody except a direct question. Please, I want you to take note of that. But before we go further, I mentioned the other time that the target of our people from Obalendo in the name of Association of Muslim Constructors of Nigeria as well as Izala to be there, Waikama to Sunnah that they want to contribute to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran chapter 61 that they have been mentioned 
why they call her Isabu in Maria, that, that is their own area. But the area Allah used on every one of us is Ya ayu al-ladhi na amanu al-adhulukun ala tijarati tunjiku Now Allah Akbar We will go into the business and you are going to enjoy the two of them to the fullest For the next one hour this is exact one thirty. Both of them are going to speak within themselves. When one finish, he hand over the microphone to another, without anybody even commenting in between. That is uh, that is the system we want to use for the next one hour, one thirty to two thirty. I'll be giving the microphone to evangelist to give his own submission. After the next ten minutes, he goes straight to Hossein Yusuf Al Mabera. Thank you. All right. Um, Al Ustaz Hussein uh, Yusuf Mabera made some challenges during his last submission. He made some challenges during his last summit. Number one, I did mention, you know, I was trying to give you the credentials of the comforter. And it is very important for us to look at the credentials before you look at the acts. I've explained this very well. My co-speaker keeps on saying that whatever God puts in his mouth, he will say, and he will get some information about God and he will tell you those things are not the credentials those things are the acts of the comforter I, I, I beg you check the credentials first because Satan is very wicked Satan wants to deceive you and to deceive me and, and anybody can come and, and try and give you the acts check the credentials first I mentioned credential number one he will abide with you forever. He will not die. It does not mean that his message, Jesus does not say his message will not die. Because, because anybody that gives a message, the message will still remain for you forever, with you forever. All the prophets, they gave message, their message are still there. Those the people that told lies, their lies are still there. Who that told the truth, their truth are still there, up to now. So even the, the prophets that told lies, their lies too will never die forever. Their lies will live with you forever. <laughs> so when Jesus talked about the comforter, he did not say that his teachings will not will abide with you forever. Please. The comforter himself, go, 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 he will not die. Like a prophet. He's not talking about an ordinary human being. I will answer the question. I will, I, in fact, I will allow Jesus to answer that question. Now, who is the comforter? Because when Jesus promised the comforter, he did not rush to tell you who the comforter is. He gave you the credentials so that you too, you will use your own eyes and check. Okay? Jesus did not tell you, I'll give you the comforter, his name shall be Ahmed. Jesus did not say that. <laughs> or I'll give you the comforter, his name shall be comforter Ahmed. Or Ahmed comforter. Jesus did not say that. He gave you the credentials. Number one, he will not die. Number two, he is the spirit of truth. And I mentioned there that even the Quran has described Muhammad as a sinner. And I will show you the verse. Quran chapter 48, verse 2. It's not like when Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray. He said, if you want to pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, forgive us our sins. Jesus was not asking for forgiveness of sin. Jesus was not praying after the good light. He was teaching his disciples, say, what do you want to pray? Say, our Father, say, who art in heaven? Say, forgive us our trespasses. Okay? But in the case of Muhammad, look at what Allah was telling Muhammad, Koro Koro, in the Quran. That Allah may forgive you your sins of the past. That Allah may forgive you, Muhammad, Allah may forgive you your sins of the past and the future and the future and complete his favor on you and complete his favor on you and guide you on the straight 
and guide you on the straight path. That Allah will number one forgive Muhammad's sins of the past, forgive his sins of the future. That means he will continue to sin in future. Hold on. If I tell you, if I tell you that maybe if I let me say um, I have a baby, okay? I have a baby. How many is more? I have a baby, and I tell my baby, don't worry. All, all the urine that you urinate in your napkin, I will carry it for you. All the urine that you have urinated in the past, I have cleaned it for you. And all the urination that you, you, you shall urinate in the future, I will clean it for you. I'm telling that my baby that you can, that my baby can continue to urinate. Okay? Allah told Muhammad, your sins of the past and your sins of the future. Clearly that you are a sinner. And Muhammad himself does not deny it. If we look in the, in the hadith, it's mentioned, things like this are mentioned here. I don't know why you, uh, uh, my brother is trying to claim that Muhammad was not a sinner. I don't know why. There is no Islamic scholar I have seen that will tell you that Muhammad was not a sinner. This is the first time I'm hearing it. It's not the spirit of truth. Jesus said, number one, he will not die. Number two, he is the spirit of truth. He's not a sinner. Okay? Then, number three. The world cannot receive him. The world cannot receive him. The world does not know him. Okay? Before I tell you who the comforter is, I have to give you the credential. Hold this credential. This is journey number three. The world cannot receive him. The world does not know him. That is why so many people they don't understand when the when when we begin to talk about this comforter. They don't know. But we know Muhammad. We, as the people of the world, we know him. We know his father Abd Abdullah, who died before he, uh, Muhammad was born. We know the mother Amina who died when the young boy was six years old. We know his grandfather, uh, Mutali, who took care of him. We know his uncle, uh, uh, Abu Tali. We know his first wife, Khadija, who was a very rich businesswoman. Okay? We know when he began to, 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 to hear revelation. We know when he ran from Mecca to Medina. We know him. The world knows him. We know when he died. We know where we buried him. We are the custodians of his bones. We keep his bones. We are holding his bones. If we want to see where he was buried, we can go there during Hajj. And we see this is where the world can ask, knows him. But the comforter that Jesus was talking about, he said the world does not know him. That disqualifies Muhammad. It disqualifies Muhammad. Number four. Because it hears him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Credential number four. The comforter will dwell in you, and he will be in you. Please, take it down. Or try and remember, number one, he will not die. Number two, he is the spirit of truth. Number three, the world does not know him. Number four, he will dwell inside you. Muhammad does not dwell in you. A, a man, a prophet cannot dwell in another man. No. He does not dwell in you. Don't tell me that because you can memorize the Quran very well. Only you Ali Kafiruno, na Abu Mantabudunong. Muhammad is not dwelling in you. Anybody who can to memorize the Quran is training. Okay? Anybody can be trained. It's a training, it's, it's, it's hard work. You can train anybody. He does not dwell in you. That disqualifies Muhammad. Then, credential number five, Jesus said. I will not leave you comfortless. 
I will come to you. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you without a comforter. I will come to you. That is number five. So Jesus is telling you, that comfort I'm talking about, it is still me. I will come to you. If you agree that Jesus promised a comforter, if you agree that Jesus promised a comforter, then you must, you must uh, look for the comforter that Jesus promised. Look at the five credentials. Number one, he will not die like Muhammad. Number two, he is the spirit of truth. He's not a sinner. Number three, the world does not know him. The world does not understand him. Number four, um, what's number four? Number four, he will dwell in you. Number five, Jesus said, I will come to you. In my next submission, I will now, I will now help you to see who that comforter is. I will show you somebody that satisfies all these credentials. When you cross-check the credentials first, before you now listen to him to know what he will say. Thank you very much. My time is up. Uh, you have not answered any of my questions. I thought that you will answer my questions, but you refuse to answer the questions. You are only parambulated. Zigzagging, repeating what you have said earlier. I hope you understand. Uh, all the prophets that came from the Almighty God, right from Adam to Muhammad, they are all subject to death. All of them, as long as human beings are concerned, they must all die. He was saying that if we go to Medina and dump or dig out the grave of Muhammad, we will see some dry bones there. I don't know what he is talking about. You know, according to the statement of Jesus, in the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 28, Jesus said, Many will come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of and all the prophets in the kingdom of heaven and the children of the kingdom shall be cast away into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing and of teeth. Abraham died. But where is Abraham now? He is in paradise, in the kingdom of God. Moses died. Moses is in the kingdom of God. Jacob, Elijah, Elisha, Zachariah.